to the Freedom Podcast with me, Josh, and we've got G back with us this week. How are you, G? Hello, hello. I'm doing very well. Thanks, Josh. <laughs> and you've had a busy weekend with a certain friend over from North Carolina. Uh, we've had Clem Ferris, haven't you, over in, yes. over in Herefordshire? Uncle Clem, we call him. Um, we've He's been coming into our probably home for, what, 30, 34 years or more? I don't know. But, yeah, 30 plus years. Uncle Clem, who is a uh, prophet, and we have seen over those years him just come in and, I don't know, just bring so much value and impact into our lives when we we're a little tiny church. In fact, he knew us before we even started church. And uh, he's just become a great family friend. And I think one of the great things is that we've got a friend for over three decades that has been involved in ministry, uh, coming to our church all those years. I think that's something real special because, you know, yeah. in, in life, yeah, sure. sometimes those circumstances, things change. Friendships don't always continue in the same way that we still like this weekend. It was like picking up where we left off. All these years, nothing has come between that relationship. And and we've just been on a great journey together as we've seen the church grow and go around the world. Yeah, absolutely amazing. And I think uh, looking back on how many times Clem has visited, he's seen the journey of Freedom Church right from it being a little seedling to where it is today planted all over the world. And he's been to many of those churches and prophesied in them. You know, if you're listening to this as a part of Freedom, you may have heard the name Clem. You may have met him. Maybe he's even prophesied uh, over you. Uh, and and G, as we even use that word, I'm aware some people listening to this would maybe not even know what that means. How would you explain what prophecy is? Well, God has always wanted to speak to His people, yeah. so the whole Bible is really about God speaking to His people, and and that's what you know the central theme is. But through man's choices, there's always been a, a separation, a distance. And so he would, and he has given the gift of the prophet to the church, it says. Uh, and what, what he does is that that prophet will come in and will speak what God um, is saying to the church. And it's uh, even right through church history. And you look in the Old Testament, God just uses these individuals who will speak at certain key moments and uh it's 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 a way of guiding people seeing that people uh are spoken to by god mm -hmm. and even the word prophet is really to bubble up and overflow and speak out it's it's almost like when it comes it's not something i've thought up or something i've you know it's not an intellectual sort of idea this is the bubbling up of the spirit of god that spills out and this is what the prophet brings and he says this is what god says and it's a way of speaking straight into people's hearts and we see it today you know in our in in right up to date in our world and the way we build church today that is operating today as much as it is in the old testament yeah and i think that when i see the prophetic in operation it's often um, God speaking into it can speak into our past things that we have been through he can speak things into our present things that are happening right now that maybe people don't know about but God's speaking into them or even things that are to come and I think sometimes we often think about it's only the things that to come that God's speaking into but sometimes it's the the here and now as well and I think it's those three elements of time really that God can begin to speak into and speak life into. And I think there's something very affirming about knowing God sees me. I still remember, um, you know, some of those first times as a child or as a um, early teenager of having someone come and pray prophetically over me. And it was so impacting. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and to have those moments where you feel like really that God sees you as an individual, it is, is quite special. And um, and I think there's something that really brings life. We see the prophetic in the Old Testament and we also see it in the New Testament, too, because I think you can think of the prophet and you think of some of those uh, old prophets of Elijah, uh, Elisha in the Old Testament. And somehow you can almost think that that's a, a very um, almost old school way of faith. But actually, we see it in the New Testament as well. 
Yeah, it's it's really powerful to see how God uses, you know, in the Old Testament, often those, you know, big prophets, they were they were warning people. There was like yeah. a warning and it's very heavy and intense. There was declaration. So when there was no hope, there'd be this declaration of the prophetic would bring life and it would speak what isn't into what will be. You know, so there was all, all these different things, but there's a difference. Perhaps I'll explain this. Um, we, we're, we're told in the New Testament to desire, you know, gifts of the Holy Spirit. And one of those gifts is um, prophecy. And it is a gift that God gives us as believers. And we believe as you look in the New Testament, you will see time and time again how that is active, that he gives it uh, and that we can, it says, you know, desire this gift to prophesy and because it builds up it speaks into people's situations uh and perhaps i i could bring this right up to date to this past sunday in hereford we uh you know we had our normal uh church event and we have double events so the first one was you know we delivered it second one uh joff who's our pastor in hereford at the end when he was doing a he was closing up in prayer he was going to do a, a leader response time and then he just had this prophetic leading where he felt the holy spirit say there is someone here in the room that you're on the verge of making a decision that could have a huge cost and if you don't, if, you know, God wants to speak to you and you've come in uh, for the first time and it, and in coming in, God is warning you, say, don't, there's a great cost to it. And God has more for you. And anyway, do you know what happened straight after someone came, spoke to him wow. and said, how did you, how did you know that? Who told you about me? And it was their first time they'd ever come into church. This is, this is a non-believer. Amazing. And God speaks, and I just love it because you've got Isaiah to the nation and all these different things, and he's speaking about this huge, you know, overview of what God's doing in the world. And then you've got on our past Sunday how God's Holy Spirit speaks through us when we're available, and he speaks to someone that is lost, that comes in, that is considering a, a making a decision. Didn't happen in the first event this person wasn't there happens in the second event right. and and obviously joff just hears and senses god wants me to say this and that is the that that's that gift of prophecy that's coming through to come in and seek save the lost to help to bring redemption it's that's why the church needs it so we are we're invited to desire the gift of prophecy it's not some super spirit. you don't have to be called elijah to prophesy <laughs> You know, you, you can, you can, you know, be called Joff. And uh, it's, it's just something very powerful that we understand that. But there is a difference. There is also the office of the prophet. Right. And we know about the fivefold ministry and these are the offices. And an off, see, I, I can prophesy and I can bring a prophetic word, but I wouldn't put myself in as the, I'm, I'm in the office of a prophet. Clem, he has spent his, what decades traveling the world to all different churches from you know all over the place yep. where his he holds this office it's like it, and that's what scripture is talking about this is an office that he holds it's a ministry that he holds and he steps into it a bit like we talk about hey you're an you know an apostle so someone might say that person they they hold the office of an apostle but other people have apostolic grace they're not an apostle, but they have this gracing, and it's the same with prophecy and having the opposite, of the, the office of the prophet, and having the gift of prophecy, which is you know what Scripture talks about in the New Testament. So there is a difference there. That's why when Clem comes, it might be once every two years. It's different to uh, hey. You know, Clem has got a word of encouragement or he doesn't say, hey, well done, you're doing this. It's it's another level. And so for anyone that's been involved in that, you know, it's a very different level right. to maybe that short word that came, you know, on a, on a Sunday. And it was, you know, it was great. And God spoke when Clem, a prophet, comes into the church. It's for certain reasons and it establishes certain things 
it is not like a just a, a word in season that is just, hey, that's really helpful. Thank you very much. It's actually to build the church. So the fivefold ministries are there to build the church. That's quite different to maybe a word of encouragement or direction for an individual. Yeah, that's really good. And uh, I think that it's a little bit like if you, you know, I was uh, did a, my kitchen renovation last year and I had my countertops. I had to uh, cut them and glue them together. And I was doing some some carpentry and it all came together. I was able to fix it. And I was like, wow, I have come of age. I am, I am doing carpentry on my own house. This amazing. is incredible. Uh, but I am nowhere near a carpenter. I might have done something that qualifies as carpentry, but it does not make me a carpenter. And I think it's a bit like that, isn't it? Is you might be able to practice some of the prophetic. And I think that we get encouragement from scripture to, to do that and to desire that. And I think that it's a really interesting thing with that, G, because often I think that people um, would say, oh, I'm open to it. You know, if God wanted to, to, to do that, then uh, I'm, I'm open. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy if God was set, started downloading some things to me. Hey, God, if you want to, fine. But the Bible actually says, don't just say I'm open, say I want it. And actually, yeah. that's a totally different posture. And I find that the people that say that they're, oh, I'm, I'm kind of open, they, they never receive it. But those that say, I want this gift, God, I'm coming after it. God, would you use me for your glory, for your kingdom, not for my own purposes, Lord, but for yours? It's amazing how God then starts speaking into them and opening that gift within them. But there's so many people that are so complacent that they don't get to try out their gift at all. And I think that, you know, even as we see this difference here of Clem coming in, the experienced carpenter, he's been working yeah. with wood for decades. Um, yeah. It's very different to someone who can share, hey, I've had this one verse for you or, hey, you know, I've got this picture for you. But, and that's often where it begins, doesn't it? That prophetic gifting. Yeah, it's a great example that, Josh, is we can all, you know, have a go at something, uh, but certain people are gifted in it. You know, where, where someone can, if it's working that bit of wood, you think they're skilled. They just have, they have a gift with their hands. They're craftsmen. Yeah. They're, they, they're cabinet makers. They, they're just the, there's something that they have gifted. Well, the same with spiritual gifts. God, you know, it says the Holy Spirit, he gives those gifts he gives them to who he desires and it's you know it's for the equipping building of the church and it is so true about the hey you know i'm open to the prophetic you're probably not really going to grow much in within that and some people think by being open suddenly they're gonna i don't know, be in worship and they're suddenly gonna get my word you know my mouth got filled with a word a prophetic word because i was open it doesn't normally mm. happen that way then there's something about desire a willingness, right. making yourself available. And this is a big one, Josh. You know, if there are people listening now and you're thinking, hey, I, I want to desire it. I want to I want to just, you know, hunger for it. Because you go through and look in Scripture, there's a lot of reference to New Testament church about, hey, of all these gifts, desire this. That's right. And I can, tell, I can tell you why it says that in, in the minute perhaps. Mm -hmm. But... But there is something about coming and having a posture of saying, I want to be available. I want to be ready. But in doing it, um, you could need to know God's word. You know, one thing that, I mean, Clem holds the office of a uh, prophet, but he's a doctor as well, a doctor of theology and Hebrew and Greek. And I don't know, I think he's got a big list because he is, he's, he's committed his, <laughs> yeah, he's committed his life to the study of scriptures so when he prophesies as we know prophecy should line up and it is always tested and checked through scripture and so if you're going to come in especially in the office of the prophet you you need to know your stuff you need to know it inside out but i think some of us want to bring a nice word of prophecy but we're not grounded in scripture right that's when you get flaky prophecy that's when, and I'm sure there's some people we, we're, you know, that are listening, Josh, that have had some weird, when, when we mention the word prophecy or a prophet, immediately yeah. we go to something weird, strange, 
flaky because I've met plenty of those people and I wouldn't, I wouldn't be listening to anything they have to say because their life doesn't back it up. But also right. some of the things they say and how they do that, you know, bring a prophetic word is not actually in line with scripture. And it's like, you don't understand scripture. You're actually a more, you know, like super spiritual flaky person, but doesn't actually un understand it should all be grounded in God's word. God's mm -hmm. word is the final, that's the, the final measure on it. It's not, I just had yeah, this okay. feeling that God wants to say this to you and you need to get up and go and do this. It's like, that's you. That's not the spirit of God. So all, all, prophecy needs to be grounded in scripture so if someone is like i desire it do you know what get in your word more and more pray more and more and out of knowing god's word i believe and you desire the prophetic it starts to flow right. so you might be with a friend and they're struggling through something and you're saying god have you got have you got a word that i could share with them and he and he gives you just a simple word that's how it the flow starts to happen it's really good yeah, I remember the first time I ever kind of started operating in the prophetic. I was 18 and I had a word from someone in our youth group and I went over there to like, right, this is it. You know, I'm, I'm going for it. God, I'm, I'm <laughs> stepping out here. And I started doing it and I was like, I had three words and it was like, God loves you. <laughs> I, was like, I, was like, I was there just waiting. I was like, is there any more? <laughs> and I was like, no, that's it. And I just had to, amen. Josh, <laughs> biblically true. You were on the money there. I know, right? <laughs> I, you can't go wrong with that prophetic maybe it was word. exactly what they needed to hear. And maybe know. it was, yeah. But because this is the, the other funny thing, Josh. I, I know it is when you step out, that is such a real example. I think we desire it. We want it. We step out. And often when you're, that's where you have to practice it. And when you step out and it doesn't quite come out the way you think, it's, it, it's fine. You've got to trust that if you have a pure heart and God, it's God, use me. It might be some simple words. And I've heard so often someone gave a word to someone. And it was just, I just had this one word, all these three words. And then afterwards, the person told the story of, do you know, what? I've been asking God to speak to me. And when you said that, that was the very thing. I needed to hear because within it, there's anointing. So even when you shared that with someone, Josh, it's, it's not like your words. What you're saying is, God, will you speak through me? It's like, God loves you. And, mm -hmm. and I tell you, when that's from God and there's anointing in it, because that's the difference of the prophetic and my own words, is um, it, it has a bigger impact than you imagine. So this is to do with anointing as well, not just coming up with a word of encouragement. Yeah. And that I think sometimes there's confusion with that. Don't you don't need to worry about it too much. But sometimes I think people just want to encourage someone, mm. and then they might say, "Oh, that was a word of prophecy." It's like, mm, it's it's not always. Uh, but if it is, again, we're told to edify and encourage one another, so it's still a good thing. But I think what we're talking about today is just recognizing that there is a very special place in in the church today that God has restored the prophetic. Uh, he's, he's restored prophets. A lot of people won't know that many prophets that, that were biblical, yeah, true. grounded, solid prophets that build in the church as in the New Testament days. Because that's what we do in freedom is we teach our guys on this. And when yeah. you look through the acts of the apostles, how we operate a prophetic gathering is just completely lined up with what happens in scripture. In you know, we're about to send someone out and you identify who they are and you bring them and you lay hands on them and you pray and you prophesy. So you're sending them out under the power of the prophetic word, you know, all those things, recognizing people for certain leadership roles and coming in and prophesying over them. So that's what we did like last night in Hereford. There was the people that were chosen to come out and have prophetic words from Clem. They, they were people who have uh, character, proven character, consistency in their life. They're holding weight within the church. And then Clem steps in as the prophet who doesn't know their personal situations and starts then declaring things, confirming things. And then the church is there like, how the heck did he know that? And, I, and it's like he's, he's explaining to the detail and he's speaking into people and he said this is what he's calling you to 
you know you know you got it in you now it's time to get up and do it and so you've got this affirmation confirmation guidance direction and you'll see that in scripture and that's something that equips the church so last night in Hereford, when we had this prophetic gathering it was we know when we left the church had risen there was like this new strength there was direction clarity there was this awareness Mm -hmm. of the supernatural because it is not natural the things that he knew because god is god inspired and when i asked clem i said how how do you because he gets up puts his hand on their shoulder you know you've seen it many times george and he he's not there say for an hour trying to think oh what word have i got he Mm. puts his hand on their shoulder and then he says i see just words on a screen or i see a picture and i I, he said i just deliver them yeah i just just, yeah auto cue and off he goes and there it's so detailed Mm. you know i think uh, the average person last night was about 20 minutes and it's like all this detail and it's exactly for the person yeah if it was for this other person before that detail would have been totally wrong. And like one after another, God was speaking intimately into his people, also corporately for the church, for the future, about the past, as you said, about the present and about all that's to come that they're called to. And it has a mass, it stirs up the fire in the church. It really does. And I think about how, G through the years that, um, that Clem has come, but, the prophetic voice really through him and through others too has really come to almost move things forward and to speak fresh vision or to spark something. And even before you and H had started the church, Clem actually came to you, didn't he? Uh, In a, in a meeting, you were actually a part of a meeting um, of the, I think it was your parent church. Was it the church that you had um, that you were in before you planted and yep. you were sat at the back of the room. I was there, baby Josh, in the in a uh, little rocker. In a little rocker, and he <laughs> came and found you outright in that in that meeting and came over to you while you were sat at the back. Yeah, there's probably I don't know 30, 40 people in that room. It was a midweek meeting. I was hiding at the back really because when you when you see god moving through the prophetic it can leave you feeling very exposed i was obviously a very sort of um yes. uh you know insecure person so i thought the best place is keep at the back row and i think i was ro- actually rocking you josh because i thought if i look down he won't look at me yeah yeah I'm a busy down. Might, don't look at me he might see contact. he might see inside my soul because that that's yeah how it can feel so i'm doing that and he leaves the front and i think most of the time he's at the front just doing some ministry and then he he walks and i can see him he's walking to the back to the back right behind me and then he puts his hand on me and he says you can't hide from god <laughs> he says you can't he sees you he sees you and he's calling you to pioneer and that would that was the call that came so so in that moment this isn't a word of encouragement This is where the calling of God dropped on me. And it was, I mean, I don't know if I was 21, maybe at this stage. And I'm there feeling the last person qualified, not even looking to go and build church as a pioneer. And God uses him to come and search for me, find me, because I thought no one saw me. And then he he calls out what I am to become, not what I am at that moment. Right. And that calling of God comes and it and it disturbed my life. It shook my life. And it was just some words that were spoken. But this is spoken from God through the prophet into the situation. You cannot underestimate what God's doing Mm. through that. And obviously the, the rest is history. That's where we sort of then started praying it we couldn't we couldn't ignore that within our hearts and it was like we need to do something and then sometime later we that's when we started um in 1988 is when we started um you know off our first little gathering with six people because the the prophet came in and the call of god came so that and and again what we saw last night in in hereford Josh, there was there were several people where a similar type of call came. I'm calling you to go. I'm calling you to go and reach uh, an unreached people group. Yeah. And 
And obviously, and then you've got these this couple who are there who already God's been speaking. And they're like, we we just put our house up. Uh, we just valued our house wow. two weeks ago. Wow. Because we sensed that God was saying, get ready. And Come then on. he comes, he speaks into it, not knowing anything. He's never met this couple. And he's got all the details. Mm. And this is, I think we we got to realize and be encouraged sometimes that we don't serve a God that is slow to speak. We don't serve a God that has left the church right. almost like a bit crippled on a crutch and we're struggling along. It says that's why he's given us this five, the fivefold ministry, right? Which is this, all the elements of who Jesus is to equip the church. We are not left ill-equipped. The only, the only issue is that for often we haven't got the faith for it or we don't believe it. We don't invest in it. We don't recognize it. We don't honor so we got to honor the prophet. We got to, you know, have an atmosphere where there is faith for the prophetic in yeah. a healthy way, where yeah. there's accountability. We don't just let anyone prophesy. We, in fact, say we need to know, you yeah, know, have where that's coming from. Mm. Yeah, it needs to be within local church because there's accountability. You can measure things, you can test things, but when you get it right in the way Scripture gives it, it is like fuel to the church it is there's no shortage of what god wants to do there was no shortage last night it was like wow one thing after another it's like the kingdom is rolling it's you know as where we are in our world right now there's a greater demand for christians to you know operate through the prophetic than ever before and i think i mentioned this earlier josh so i'll just say this the what what does god say you know, I want you to desire out of all these gifts. I want you to desire the, um, to prophesy. And I, I believe that it's because for each of us as believers in this, the world that we live in, and it's say 2000 years since that was said through all the different points of history. And for us right now, one of the greatest things we need is to lead our lives in a prophetic yeah. way. I need to have prophetic direction for my family for my marriage, yeah. for when I, I don't want to just move to a house because I like the area. I need to be prophetically led. Come on. I need to also, if I am going to go into that new job, I need to, pr to be prophetically aware. I need to sort of, uh, you know, be within whatever ministry of church. I'm leading a small group. I want to be a prophetic leader. A prophetic leader means I'm operating outside of my own understanding. Right. And it's a gift of the Holy Spirit that is breaking into new ground. It's saying, no, this looks like the best decision, but actually God is saying, no, I've got something more for you. Just hold back. Something else is coming. Come on. That's prophetic leadership. And that's why I think he's saying, not just for the church, but for us as in, for his people, he said, desire this because when you're in tune with the Holy Spirit, and you understand the prophetic, which comes from also a foundation of understanding his word. Wow. You would start living your life with the boldness and the courage. And that's what's lacking in so many people because it's almost like, I'm not sure what to do. And I don't hear God's voice. Yeah. But he said, no, desire this. Tune in with me. Be accountable around this. But I'm going to give you a gift that's going to help you lead your lives in a prophetic way. Come on. That's brilliant. And I think that. Uh, one of the things that I've often heard Clem say is that he feels very much that there's a great flow that comes through to our church because of the honor and expectation and hunger within the people of our churches. When he arrives, it's like, oh, these people want it and that God's going to meet them in this place. And so there's almost this, almost the turning up of the dial when uh, when he comes. And I think that there's something, isn't there, for all of us, listening to this how much do we value the voice of god how much do we value the voice of the prophetic in our lives yeah. how do we honor that how do we prepare ourselves because when we do it's so true to scripture that where it's a drawing near to god it's that hunger it's that expectation god honors and sees that and then pours out yeah i love it and he actually even said that last night josh he said there was such a release because he said oh. we have spent years where uh, there's there's a framework and then right. you build a framework and understanding for for because it's God ultimately he's pouring out through Clem but he says I can only pour out through what's been prepared 
because there's a, there's there's a preparation of not just honor but of understanding so we've mm-hmm. taught our church about this is what it is there's responsibility when you have the prophetic this isn't about hey you're going to god's going to bless you with a bigger house and a nicer car and all this because that that's how sadly in our world some people view the prophetic give me a prophetic word so i can be blessed mm-hmm. and what we've you know what we've looked to do is say this isn't actually about you god will speak to you and through you but this is about the big picture of the kingdom and your part within it so what you do is you honor the prophetic you honor you know as clem comes in there's something about honoring that office about understanding and submitting your i want him to speak about this and i want confirmation about my brother or my family or getting married and if it we we teach in a way that is do you know what lay all of that down and just say, Lord, you you know what I need. And every one of the individuals that was spoken over last night had all, like God had his own little mood and he had his own way of ministering, whether it was to the personal heart, to the mm-hmm. some of the grief someone's been through, to the call that's being stirred through, to the courage from, you know, some for the call that's going to be coming. And um, I think it's so amazing to see how God loves every individual, but then he combines it all and he speaks about his kingdom and his church. It's, it, I mean, we're very blessed, Josh, to have over 30 odd years of seeing this operate. And, you know, Clem has been, what, Cambodia, Africa, into Europe. India. Um, he's been, I think, into India. It's it's just, you know, UK so many times. So all of our church, that's just our churches. Yeah and has gone and deposited the prophetic and we we are living in the days of fulfillment of prophetic words and we we could be on here for days listing the Good. things that god said this and then it happened yeah god said this was coming and we looked out for it and prayed into it because you've got responsibility to pray into these things as well to see them burst so we did that and we have miracles after miracles and of what God has done through the prophetic and we're, you know, we're seeing and living in those days. And that's, um, yeah, it's a huge privilege for us. And we, we are so blessed to have that special relationship that God has planned all those years ago. Yeah. It is amazing because we're in the fourth decade of fulfillment, really of seeing the fruit of what's been spoken and, that brings again a great confidence so when we're getting together and praying and believing and getting ready to receive some prophetic input to our church is that we know we've seen it we have and i think one of the really interesting things is that the prophetic has intersected with our church over the years and it has come at poignant times that have given us just a bump onwards a jump forwards a fresh bit of vision a confirmation to something that we're doing and uh and it really has played such a crucial role and i think about you g you're very apostolic you know you are uh, like an architect you know building and envisioning fresh land to to develop on and uh, but the prophetic has come and it's really brought color into some of those drawings hasn't it it's brought life it's it's maybe when you're kind of putting up a structure is that hey there's a field over there as well that you can start building on too and just maybe share a little bit about how for you as a overseeing leader how that's come and interacted and helped you decision make over the years i mean one of the greatest things has been affirmation because when you're yeah. leading and i think back to those early years i didn't know what i was doing you know i i had self doubts i was thinking i got to make these decisions and do we do we buy this building do we choose to go this direction and not and then you have the prophetic come into your life god is it's like he steps in and there's this voice that says you're on the right track or don't do that do this and it's like thank goodness and it is and it brings a courage yeah. to you and a boldness yeah. sometimes you you don't really have any guarantee or assurance you just hear that voice that prophetic voice within you 
And for me, that's been so often where I've just heard the voice of the Holy Spirit saying no, this or yes, that way. And from it, or he said, don't trust, don't trust this situation. And then later on, you think, wow, if we'd have gone down that road and what it does, it br- it brings a, I think a, a courage and boldness to yeah. you through God that you need to rely on him more. So I think I've learned that through that prophet, what it does as well is there's, I, I just need to hear him more. I, I dare step out each week and think I can do it alone. I need to hear what he's saying, what, what he's doing. And he brings that boldness, but also, uh, I know, uh, confidence in his sovereignty you yes. know it's like god's yes. got this yes god's in there sure. you know i'm I'm here worried about it i think oh it's all down to me yeah i've got to carry some things but he is saying no that's when you know that this you, you know that the burden is like yoke is easy because it's yeah. like i understand that he is sovereign but i am also part i'm partnering with god through it that's what the prophetic does it empowers you brings affirmation it gives that direction that you need. And that's what I've seen all the way through. He has cool. always been faithful. And where we are today is because of the way that he has given those gifts and blessed our church through people, through individuals. And it's it's made such a difference. I do want to perhaps add this as well, Josh. I'm thinking about prophetic words. I'm sure there's some people listening who have had prophetic words. And this is a big one where you're thinking, yeah, that's all very well and whatever, but there are prophetic words. We see them come into our church quite often. And as you get to know them, they say, yeah, six years ago, we had this spoke over our marriage about our future, but it never, you know, it never came to pass. We never saw it. And some people who ended up in life and unexpected situations where maybe there was a divorce or there was loss or grief and things. And almost like the prophetic never happened. And years, you might be 10 years on thinking, was that even true? Was it, did I miss it? Did I, was I not listening correctly? Uh, and and I want to just encourage people today that, you know, when we when we receive prophetic words, we have to contend for them. Right. It's not just God spoke it. Uh, this is what he said. It's all going to happen. No, you, there's something dependent upon you contending for that word. And that sometimes can be through years. Yeah. And I want to encourage you today that if there are some unfulfilled words in your life that you know were true, but somehow you've just thought, maybe I missed it. I want to, I want to encourage you and say, maybe today, even as we're talking about the prophetic, I'm asking the Holy Spirit to stir that word again to refreshment. Maybe it's at the back of your Bible. Maybe it's on a bit of paper somewhere. I want to encourage you to go and get it out again. That's good. See what God spoke to you. You you know that it was it was real at the time, but somehow it faded. You filed it. And I believe that this is a season where God is pulling some of those things out. Maybe you've just turned up in one of our churches and God is saying, remember I spoke about leadership mm. stuff. Maybe I spoke about this how God was going to use you. Maybe the time is now, but you've got to contend for it. You've got to bring it back to memory and start praying and say, God, is this the season? Is this the time? Because these words are suspended. Prophetic words are suspended. They're spoken. They're suspended over our life, but it's up to us to contend and grab them. And that's down to us to see them come into reality, into our lives. And I just think that there's some words that God wants to just activate right now and be encouraged because God, you know, I've seen things that God spoke over my life that took 15 years to come to fruition. And there was a lot of battling in between. And then when it happened, it's like, there it is. I, I thought I was wrong. I thought I'd lost it. And God said, Hey, one thing we struggle with, with the prophetic, with God is time. When God speaks, he doesn't put time stamps on it generally, but we see it with where we are right now. So when we don't see it happen in two years, three years, we we almost give up on it. I want to say, take perhaps hold of faith again and say, maybe what he spoke about is about to take place. Have your faith stirred, contend for it, yet in his word, be encouraged today. God hasn't forgotten what he spoke, but you need to place yourself in a situation where you are hungry, available and willing and say, God, come on, I'm ready. I'm waiting. Brilliant. 
absolutely brilliant. And I pray that that really breathes some uh, oxygen on the coals of those words yeah. in people's lives and that they Amen. start to burn again with some of that promise and some of the faith that they had when those words were received, because you're right, G, that there are, there are things that are awaiting to be reawoken. So I hope that that's been such a blessing. I know it will have been to so many people listening in on this and, um, and we're, we're thankful, G, thank you, thankful for that input. I would say as well that if you get a moment, pray for Clem. He's been an amazing voice into yeah. our church for yeah. uh, so the fourth for decade that he's been doing that and still, um, you know, so important today, but also we're believing for those new prophetic voices as well to be raised up yes. for this generation too. So praying for that um to to come to fruition but we'll be back next week with another episode on the freedom podcast podcast thanks for joining us